Um, as many people knew, and I talked about on, I even talked about it last week too, before the debates, um, last weekend, I mean, uh, before the debates, um, and, and in many other episodes, how Joe Biden is, he has a major, he has, he has a lot of major donors. He has big support from big donors, rich donors that um, back his candidacy because they know that he's going to be a suck up to the super rich and he's going to be doing all their bidding. So with that, with that, knowing that it's now he's not so much in the, he's not so much in the good graces of those super rich donors. And, um, you know, the, the, the corporate establishment as much as he was before the debate. So because of his performance in the debate, um, he has lost support of one of his major donors. So let's get to the article here that talks about this. This is an article from CNBC.com. The title says, Joe Biden loses support of top campaign fundraiser in Bay Area after comments on segregationists and the Hyde Amendment too. Um, it lists a couple of the key points here. It says former Vice President Joe Biden lost a key financial supporter after his comments on working with segregationists and flip-flopping on the Hyde Amendment. Um, Tom McNearney, McNearney, is that us? McIn McNearney informed Biden's team last week that he can no longer back his campaign. And coming from, and this is a quote coming from McNearney, he says, I would imagine I'm not alone. He told uh, he told CNBC. Um, it says former Vice President Joe Biden lost one of his top fundraisers after controversial comments regarding his work with past segregationists and his flip flop on repealing the Hyde Amendment. CNBC has learned. Tom McIerney, McIerney, McIerney damn, that's a hard name. It's an M C I N E R N E Y, McIerney. A veteran, uh, San, uh, a veteran San Francisco-based lawyer informed Biden's team on June 20th that he can no longer, uh, no longer help him raise campaign cash to compete in the 2020 presidential election. He said that on June 20th. Wow, that's weird. And this article is after the debates, though. Uh, well, I guess maybe after the position on the Hyde Amendment he took. Yeah. So it says, I had actually let the campaign know I'd, pull, I'd pulled back my support of Biden for now. Oh, he said for now. McKinney told CNBC, I don't think he did well last night. Okay, so I guess he had already kind of pulled back and then he decided that I, he's no longer going to be involved at all, period. <laughs> And then um, he says, I don't think he did well last night, he added, reflecting on Biden's debate performance on Thursday night. While McNearney is the first financier to publicly withdraw his support after Biden's controversial, controversial round of comments, the loss is significant because it could harbinger, uh, harbinger of further defections. I would imagine I'm not alone, said McNearney, uh, who was a lead bundler for President Barack Obama in his first run for president. He helped Obama's campaign raise at least $200,000 through that cycle, according to the uh, nonpartisan Center for Re Responsive Politics. The news comes as Biden is starting a Bay Area fundraising tour on Friday that will continue the weekend, continue through the weekend. Biden's campaign has been reeling from his latest stumbles. At a recent fundraiser, uh, Biden recalled his days as a senator from Delaware, working alongside two segregationist lawyers, in, in, uh, including Senator James Eastland. Uh, at least there was some civility. We got things done. We didn't agree on much of anything, Biden said at the time. Today, you look at the other side, and you're the enemy. So that was the comments that um, Joe Biden made um, about the segregation, apparently, or part of the comments. Uh, it says, earlier this month, Biden went back and forth publicly over whether he supported the Hyde Amendment, which bars federal funding for most abortions. He eventually declared he was against the law. Yeah, after he <laughs> realized the, the after he realized the blowback from the left, basically he pulled back his his support. Um, it says a spokesperson for Biden did not return a request for comment. Um, Biden's work with segregationists became a sore point for him in Thursday Thursday's debate in San, in Miami. Senator Kamala Harris used his comments to question the former vice president's record on busing and race relations. When Biden was in the Senate in the 1970s, he sought support from segregationists in his fight against busing. Wow. 
There was a little girl in California who was part of the second class to integrate in her public schools and she was bused to school every day and that little girl was me, Harris said. Um, I will tell you that on this subject, it cannot be an intellectual debate among Democrats. We have to take it seriously. We have to act swiftly. Biden labeled Harris's attacks as a mischaracterization and fired back criticizing her for becoming a prosecutor while he was a public defender. Hmm, I did not know he was a public defender. Uh, he asked, uh, she said, do you agree that you were wrong to oppose busing in America? Biden snapped back by saying, I did not oppose busing in America. What I opposed is busing, busing ordered by the Department of Education. Yeah, uh, that's a that, that's a <laughs> a harsh attack there from um, from Kamala Harris. But that that line about her being a prosecutor was uh, that was pretty good. A lot of people on the left have called her out for that. So, but at the same time, I mean, it doesn't really have anything to do with the debate. So he's just deflecting by trying to talk about another issue. So let's um, let's just play the part of this part of the, the debate exchange they had here um, between Kamala Harris and Joe Biden, um, just to give you guys a little bit of a refresher um, of what happened Thursday night. Here it is. Check it out. So on the issue of race, I couldn't agree more that this is an issue that is still not being talked about truthfully and honestly. I, there is not a black man I know, be he a relative, a friend, or a coworker, who has not been the subject of some form of profiling or discrimination. Growing up, my sister and I had to deal with the neighbor who told us her parents couldn't play with us because, she, because we were black. And I will say also that, that in this campaign, we've also heard, and I'm going to now direct this at Vice President Biden, um, I do not believe you are a racist. And I agree with you when you commit yourself to the importance of finding common ground. Mm -hmm. But I also believe, and it's personal, and I was actually very, it was hurtful, to hear you talk about the reputations of two United States senators who built their reputations and career on the segregation of race in this country. And it was not only that, but you also worked with them to oppose busing. And, you know, there was a little girl in California who was part of the second class to integrate her public schools. And she was bused to school every day. And that little girl was me. So I will tell you that on this subject, it cannot be an intellectual debate among Democrats. We have to take it seriously. We have to act swiftly. As Attorney General of California, I was very proud to put in place a, a requirement that all my special agents would wear body cameras and keep those cameras on. Senator Harris, thank you. Vice President Biden, you have been invoked. We are going to give you a chance to respond. Vice President Biden. It's a mischaracterization of my position across the board. I did not praise racists. That is not true, number one. Number two, if we want to have this campaign litigated on who supports civil rights and whether I did or not, I'm happy to do that. I was a public defender. I didn't become a prosecutor. I came out and I left a good law firm to become a public defender when, in fact, when, in fact, when in fact my city was in flames because of the, the uh, assassination of Dr. King, number one. Now, number two, as the U.S., as, excuse me, as the uh, uh, Vice President of the United States, I work with a man who, in fact, we worked very hard to see to it we dealt with these issues in a major, major way. The fact is that in terms of busing, the busing, I never, you would have been able to go to school the same exact way because it was a local decision made by your city council. That's fine. That's one of the things I argued for, that we should not be, we should be breaking down these lines. But so the bottom line here is, look, Everything I've done in my career, I ran because of civil rights. I continue to think we have to make fundamental changes in civil rights. And those civil rights, by the way, include not just only African-Americans, but the LGBT community. But they, Vice President Biden, do you agree today, do you agree today that you were wrong to oppose busing in America then? No, do you agree? I did not oppose busing in America. What I opposed is busing ordered by the Department of Education. 
That's what I opposed. Well, I there did was not a oppose. failure of, of states to, to integrate no, public schools in America. I was part of the second the, class to integrate Berkeley, the, California public schools almost two decades after Brown v. Board of Education. Because your city council made that decision. It was a so local decision. So that's where the federal government must step the, in. The that's why we have the Voting Rights Act and the Civil Rights Act. That's why we need to pass the Equality Act. That's why we need to pass the ERA, because that, there yeah. are moments in history where states fail to preserve the civil rights of all people. I supported the okay, ERA from the very beginning seconds. when Vice I ran President Biden, 30 seconds, because I want to bring you know, other people into this. I supported I the ERA from the very beginning. I'm the guy that extended the Voting Rights Act for 25 years. We got to the place where we got 98 out of 98 votes in the United States Senate doing it. I've also argued very strongly that we, in fact, deal with the notion of denying people access to the ballot box. I agree that everybody, once they, in fact, they should, anyway, my time's up. I'm sorry. Thank you, Vice President. <laughs> that ending was so awkward. He was like, oh, my time's up, my time's up. I don't want to say no more. I mean, <laughs> you should have probably kept going, but I mean, I don't know. A lot of people are seeing that as like him kind of just like conceding that he was wrong. But I just, I don't know. I think you, on, in all honesty, I think he was just thinking like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm just kind of repeating the same thing again and again. So let me just let somebody else speak. Probably felt like he already made his point. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's uh, Kamala. Kamala went after him hard though. He, she, he, she nailed him on that one. And that's a hard, like, man, he's her dog. Don't ask him if he's all right. She, she pummeled him. And, you know, to her credit as being, you know, the, that whole prosecutor type person, because she was a, as he mentioned, he was a prosecutor. She was, she was a prosecutor. Um, I mean, she has the ability to go hard on those kind of things and, you know, to really kind of like, what is it? Cross examine. That's what prosecutors do or just lawyers do in general. But, you know, she seems to have that a good ability at, at cross examining, um, you know her her enemies or rivals or whatever very well and you know gotta give credit to her for that she, i i'm not a supporter of kamala harris i do not support kamala harris because i think she has a very um troubling record on many other issues um we're gonna get to one of those issues which she has um flip-flopped on many times multiple times um throughout this um current campaign um but, you know, just credit where credit is, is due, at least in this regard. She did do a good job of calling up Joe Biden. If it would have been anybody else, I would have given them credit too. So it's not about her. It's not about any particular politician. But in this case, she did well. And Biden deserves to get called out for that. And, you know, he, you know, first of all, there was a lot of applause lines for Kamala Harris there. A lot of, like, jeers, you know, kind of half cheers, half boos for, um, for joe biden um largely people weren't it didn't seem like people were buying what he was saying and i mean i listen if you want I, I, if people i don't know if there was fact checking done regarding whether his vote for um you know you know being you know his vote uh on busing was you know whether it was you know, whether it was regarding the, the Department of Education or whatever, I don't know. I'm sure there's been some sort of fact check on that. But if there is, I mean, that doesn't really matter. I mean, what does it matter if the Department of Education is doing it or not? Either way, you voted in favor. I'm sorry, you voted um, uh, against busing. So, I mean, I don't know. It's, uh, it, it's just, he's not, he's not, he just doesn't seem prepared for any of this kind of stuff. I don't know what it is. I, I honestly, I think a large part of it may be because he just thinks like, oh, well, I'm the front runner and nobody can get anything, you know, nobody can stick anything on me and I'm going to get away with it. And anybody that calls me out, I'll just, you know, it's going to bounce off me like Superman. You know, all the attacks are going to bounce off me like Superman and I'll just be able to fight them off. And because I'm the front runner, you know, it's okay because I'm, I'm going to stay as the front runner and all the other candidates suck. Yeah, well, and that's not <laughs> exactly, that's, first of all, that's never been the case with anybody, with any politician, if you want to use that, if you want to use that logic, that's, I mean, if anything, that being the front runner, especially this early in a, in a race, it, 
a lot of time it hurt a lot of times it hurts you and that's why a lot of people went after him and you know you're you're going to be seen as a big target now that's in my opinion that's not going to be the same case with with somebody like bernie sanders because i don't think there's anything that bernie sanders is going to be called out for by the democratic party but not the democratic party but you know members of the democratic party as far as you know what paul which one of his policies are bad because majority of the policies that he's pushing for if not all of the policies that he's pushing for the democratic base and you know a large i would say yeah a large part of the democratic party supports i mean look at all the things that you know look at all the the policies that you know uh, in both both nights of the debate that that the policies that the politician i'm sorry the candidates on the stages were on both stages were pushing for all of them were basically trying to be copycats of bernie sanders and trying to push for the same things he's been always been pushing for 40 years you know so they're trying to make their ber their best bernie sanders have been their best bernie sanders impression so that they could win over progressive votes but what they don't know is that progressives are not going to fall for that for their bullshit that easily because they know that bernie sanders is the real deal and the rest of them are just you know they're just copycats and trying to be like bernie so but um but yeah, but Bernie Sand, but but uh, Joe Biden is not. It's not. He's he's not a legitimate front runner. The, like I said before, the only reason he's the front runner is because he was Obama's VP, and he he's going to lose that front runner status very very soon. Um, I I feel like Bernie Sanders is probably going to take over that. I feel like Elizabeth Warren might take over that as well, uh, if not at least get close to taking over. I'm not. I don't. I'm talking about ultimately. I'm not talking about right now. And after this debate, I think Biden is still going to be front runner in the majority of the polls. But he's going to start to falter for sure. If he's falter, if he's faltering just among the donors, I wouldn't be surprised if he's not faltering among regular people, especially based on the reaction that he got from um, the crowd there. Let alone. The fact that the media is going to be constantly harping away on that uh, on that uh, portion of the debate where Kamala Harris went after him, and that's something. That, and you know the role of the media. The more the media talks about something, the more people are going to recognize it and hear about it, and they're going to be like, "Wow, you're right. That's true. I don't know if I like that person because of this statement they took, and then the way that person, you know, that other person attacked them for it or went after them for it. Yeah, they're right. They're totally right. You know, I don't support that person anymore. So that's how a lot of the times it works with uh, people who are watching the media and and just the base in general so their their minds are going to be changed very quickly and, and you know especially in this day age of social media let alone regular media multimedia people figure these things out very quickly and hear about them and make their voices heard um very very uh very very loudly